G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel, a footy channel that is so true that we're going to start talking more about cricket as the summer progresses and today we're going to go through the uh, the squads and the, the list changes that have taken place ahead of the Big Bash League for the 2023-2024 season, which I believe is BBL 13. Now as you know, we've uh, delved a little bit into cricket content over the, the ODI World Cup that just happened. Uh, I've been doing some T20 international live streams between India and Australia and I plan to continue doing that with you as well. But it was brought up, uh, shout out Rogue Wright on the on the live stream, that uh, it's actually quite difficult to get a read of exactly what the lists are going into BBL 13. A lot of that information is a little bit hard to find, so what I've done is gone through and done some research on what the squads are going to look like going into this season. Now, I will warn you, when you're trying to Google for things like BBL, I did actually discover that BBL can stand for something quite different, and uh, well, I got a little distracted there for a little while. But we're going to talk about each team one by one. I'm going to show you these squads on the screen. I'm going to talk you through some of the changes, and uh, my intention at the, this current point in time is to cover the Big Bash League as best I can over this Australian summer. There'll be live streams, there'll probably be some analysis videos. Uh, to what extent I can really do them depends on whether I get a job. But for now, we're going to talk about the squads one by one. And uh, if you do me a favor and subscribe to the channel, that would be much appreciated. So the first thing to note about this upcoming BBL 13 season is that the format of the season has changed. They've actually shortened it. Uh, this is due to both requests by players and some of the feedback by fans as well. The last season went on a little bit too long and they've shortened this season by 17 games. It was 61 games last year. Of course, uh, eight teams taking part. And uh, this year, there's only going to be 44 matches, 40 home and away games, and then a four-game final series. So some trades have taken place. There's been a couple of list changes. A couple of players have pulled out. In fact, the draft that took place in September, I believe the top two picks from that draft in Harry Brooks and Rashid Khan have pulled the plug on the season uh, for various different reasons. But we'll cover all that as we get into the team. So let's start with the Adelaide, and I'll get you their list there available on the screen for you. So they finished seventh last year. They, from memory, they, they started that season quite well and fell away quite poorly, in particular when guys like Rashid Khan and, and Chris Lynn had to play in different leagues. And that's the other outlier here with uh, with talking about BBL squads. It's, there's different availabilities for different players and it gets a little bit messy. But the strikers have suffered a crushing blow with Rashid Khan, the number one pick in the draft, who Adelaide retained, has pulled out of the season because he's got to undergo back surgery. So that is a massive blow. He's one of the most dangerous players in the BBL. They've then drafted Jamie Overton from England, who was actually the 100, the 100 player of the tournament uh, as a bowling all-rounder. And that uh, I sort of replaces Colin DeGrandom. I hope I'm saying that right. DeGrandom, I think that's right. Yeah, he is not playing for the Adelaide Strikers in this tournament. Last year, we saw Chris Lynn as their top scorer, so availability for him will be important. We also saw someone like Matt Short have a great all-round season last year with both bat and ball. Last year, another feature of their side was, um, I thought, the bowling attack of Wes Agar and that Thornton kid, who took five for three against the Thunder when they got bowled out for 15, which uh, was hilarious. So they've unearthed a couple of good frontline bowlers there. They've also recruited Darcy Short, who joins from Hobart after a mixed bag of a season last year. And uh, I believe it's also said by Jason Gillespie that they're not expecting to have Travis Head or Alex Carey available for any games, despite being in their squad for this tournament. So let's talk about the Brisbane Heat next, the side that finished fifth in last year's tournament. And scanning across, you see a couple of familiar names there, especially from an Australian Test cricket point of view. Usman Khawaja is in that squad, Manus Labuschagne, but unfortunately both of them are probably not going to be available too much, if at all, due to international commitment. So the uh, Heat have recruited Sam Billings and Colin Munro once again to cover for those losses. Now, looking at that squad, you know, I'd probably isolate uh, Michael Neeser as probably their crown jewel. Last year, he was terrific. He came second in the, uh, well, the wicket-taking statistics. He was the second best bowler in the competition. And he's a good sort of bowling all-rounder as well. And Swepson is another one who, I don't know if he was that prolific last BBL, but he is having a good Sheffield Shield season, I'll note as well, being uh, in the top handful of wicket-takers. Then there's the Hobart Hurricanes, who finished sixth in last year's tournament. And from a drafting point of view, one player they've added is England's Chris Jordan, the fast bowler and terrific fielder after the Sydney Sixers couldn't retain him. The other international player they've got is Corey Anderson, and uh, Corey Anderson can hit the ball. I remember back, I think it was like 2014, not sure on the exact year, but he actually broke what was then Shahid Afridi's record for fastest ODA 100, uh, which was 37 balls, and then Corey Anderson hit it in 36, I believe. So the guy can hit, and is definitely a good all-round option there for the Hurricanes. Some of their best performed players last year um, was probably Tim David in the middle order. It felt like Hobart's uh, top order didn't really get the job done last year, but uh, Tim David was a pretty good find for them. Riley Meredith also was good with the ball. There was also a player called Patrick Dooley who had a bit of a breakout season last year. 
uh, but didn't play a full season. From a bowling point of view, he was good. And another good recruit for them is Sam Hain, who uh, had a good season with the Brisbane uh, Heat last year. The Hurricanes have recruited him, and uh, I couldn't help but note, he's got a T20 average of over 40 which is pretty damn elite. Let's talk about the Melbourne Renegades, who do look like they've got a pretty strong squad on paper, having finished third last year and a couple of good recruits for them as well. So first of all, Quinton de Kock is going to make his BBL debut. They can't get enough of de Kock over there in, at the Renegades. And that's really building a good, strong top order along with guys like, uh, you know, Sean Marsh is still there, big favorite of mine, but uh, Aaron Finch as well. On top of that, they've made some moves through trades with the Melbourne Stars. They've picked up Adam Zampa, and it's a good time to do that because Adam Zampa has just had probably the tournament of his life being, I think, the second highest wicket taker at the ODI World Cup. So that's worked out really well for them. And they've also signed Joe Clark, a English wicketkeeper batsman from the Melbourne Stars. They were a little bit light on in wicketkeepers. In fact, I don't think they had one on their squad until de Kock, and then they've got Clark as well. So they've got a couple of options there. Peter Siddle also returns from the Adelaide Strikers, and they've signed a young batting prodigy in Harry Dixon as well, who could be a long-term player of the future. Um, again, he's a bit young to really make an impact potentially, but a good signing nonetheless. And then there's also Nathan Lyon, who I've read has signed a three-year deal with the Renegades. Interesting stuff. Now let's talk about their arch rivals in the Melbourne Stars, who finished dead last last year. And they tried and failed to poach Rashid Khan in this year's draft, which kind of worked out well for them because Rashid Khan, like I said, has pulled out of the tournament. Unfortunately for them, however, instead of Rashid Khan, they drafted Harry Brook from England, who has now pulled out of the tournament as well, I think due to workload. So they have the ability to replace him, if I'm not mistaken. And as a side note, I'll say that I think clubs with or teams with spots on their roster can still sign international players in between now and the season. They did also draft Harris Ralph from Pakistan, who has decided to uh, prioritize BBL over playing test cricket for Pakistan, which, you know, was uh, not a very popular decision back in Pakistan. They did go into the draft without a spinner, having traded Adam Zampa, but they did draft Usama Mia from Pakistan, who is a leg spinner, I believe. And the good thing about Ralph and uh, Mia, from what I can gather, is that these guys will be available for the whole tournament. They also acquired Sam Harper as part of that trade for Adam Zampa. So he joins from the Renegades to the Melbourne Stars. Now let's talk about the mighty Perth Scorchers. Naturally, it's my team being a Perth boy, who are of course the reigning champions after a uh, dramatic final win last year. That was awesome. But not too much to report in terms of uh, squad changes. I suppose a bit. They have signed Zach Crawley from England, uh, who played for Hobart previously, and decided to have another crack with Laurie Evans, uh, who wrapped up in an anti-doping saga last year. But he's back and playing for the Perth, Perth Scorchers. Cooper Connolly has been uh, retained after obviously being the hero in the final with a great last uh, little knock. On the negative side, you know, someone like Cam Green has opted not to play in the BBL to focus on the longer formats and potentially playing for Australia. Uh, Mitch Marsh is in the squad, though Inglis is in the squad, but again, the Scorch is going to be a little bit vulnerable to players playing uh, for Australia. The other loss is Cam Bancroft, who is enjoying a really good run of form at the moment in the Sheffield Shield, but due to salary cap tightness, as it were, uh, he has gone and joined the Sydney Thunder, which is a bit of a shame. But my boy Sam Whiteman, former teammate, he probably doesn't remember who I am. Uh, he's come back to play for the Scorchers as well and can probably keep if Inglis is called up for higher duties. So I think that's all the changes there for the Scorchers. Obviously, the more availability you get from guys like Mitch Marsh and Josh Inglis will be pretty pivotal, you'd think, although they have a good history of being good even when their players are out. So let's talk about the Sydney teams now. First of all, the Sydney Sixers who finished second in last year's uh, Home and Away series. As I sort of alluded to before, they had the choice of retaining Chris Jordan or Tom Curran. And they decided to prioritize Tom Curran and therefore uh, they obviously lose Chris Jordan. They've also redrafted James Vince to their squad. It was uh, reported today, I believe, Steve Smith will make a cameo for the Sixers this year. There's gonna be a small window before the test series starts. I think he's gonna play a game and then maybe one in January. So not a major player, but he did have a pretty damn good season last year. At, uh, I read that he played five games in average 86 and a half. The Sixers also boast last year's leading wicket taker in Sean Abbott. So it's an already strong side. And if they can get some value out of Steve Smith, that is going to be very good for them. And finally, let's talk about the other Sydney team in the Sydney Thunder, who finished fourth last year. 
And I suppose in some team news, Chris Green has now been appointed their captain ahead of this season. We know they already boast some dangerous players such as Alex Hales, but they've also added Cam Bancroft, like I just talked about, who uh, got kind of squeezed out for salary cap reasons, I believe, from the Perth Scorchers. He's also, like I said, in good form in the Sheffield Shield and seems to be hitting his prime as a player and a key player last year for them. They've also drafted Pakistani quick Zaman Khan, who I don't know much, too much about, but I believe he will have some good availability for them throughout the entire tournament. And they also got uh, McAndrew there, who is the leading wicket taker in the Sheffield Shield. So a couple of players in some really good form for them. So there you have it, guys. That is all the squads. Uh, I hope you got something out of that. And uh, I hope you're looking forward to the BBL season as much as I am. Like I said, I'm intending to cover it as much on the channel as possible. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'm going to be doing live streams and potentially analysis videos throughout as well. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.